Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about number properties and there's a couple of specific properties that help us when dealing with numbers um, in terms of setting us up to use the order of operations and things like that. The first one that we're going to talk about is called the commutative property. The commutative property um, has to do with the order that we do things in. And we've got some leeway when we're talking about these specific operations and so the basic breakdown of commutative property is numbers can be added or multiplied in any order. What does this look like? Let's say for example we have 3 times 2. It equals 6. Now that's a very simplistic example but let's look at what happens if we do it the other way. What if I switch the two things? 2 times 3. The answer is the same. And so this switching would be the commutative property. It also works with addition. If I have 5 plus 9, that's 14. Or 9 plus 5 is also equal to 14. That's commutative property. Switching the order does not matter. But then you'll ask yourself, I've got those two operations, but what about subtraction? If I have a subtraction problem, say, I don't know, 8 minus 12, Remember what I can do with these subtraction problems. I don't want to subtract. I want to make it into an addition problem. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say subtracting is the same as adding a negative. So really I have 8 plus a negative 12. Because adding a negative is the same as subtracting. And so what I can do then is I can say now the answer to this problem is going to be two different signs. So 12 minus 8 is going to be 4. I take the absolute value of 8 and the absolute value of negative 12 and I see obviously that the negative 12 is bigger and so it's going to give me a negative 4. So the answer to this is negative 4. What if I added them in the other order? So then I had a negative 12 plus 8. See how I switched the order there? I still have two opposite signs so I'm going to subtract the easy way meaning the larger value minus the smaller value. I'm going to get 4 and still when I evaluate the absolute values this one's bigger so I'm going to keep that negative sign I get negative 4. Same answer. That allows me to say I can still use this with subtraction because I don't want to subtract. I want to make it into an addition problem. Let's look at a couple of these examples and see how it works. 7 minus 9. Like we did up top, we're going to make this into an addition problem. So it's going to be 7 plus a negative 9. And so then I can reorder it. Well, if I think about this, it's going to be 9 minus 7 is 2. And 9 is the bigger absolute value. So my answer is going to be equal to negative 2. And negative 9 plus 7 is going to give me also negative 2. So the order doesn't matter. When I'm subtracting, I just make it into an addition problem. Let's look at subtracting a negative. Well, I know that 4 minus a negative 3, subtracting a negative is the same as adding. So really this is 4 plus 3 which equals 7 and 3 plus 4 equals 7 as well. That's the commutative property, switching the order of an addition or a multiplication problem. Why do I need this? Because I can help myself by reordering expressions. Let me do this in a different way because it's hard to see negative 54 plus 35 minus 16. I'm going to make this into an all addition problem. Remembering of course I don't change this one so it's a negative 54 plus 35 plus negative 16. Well if I start to add these in a different order watch what happens. Negative 54 and I notice that I can make an even group of 10 with the 16 and the 54 so I'm going to say negative 54 plus a negative 16 plus 35. Well these two go together quite nicely because I have two 
negative number, so I'm going to have 54 plus 16 is 70, and I keep the common sign. So the common sign is negative. So now my new problem becomes negative 70 plus 35. Well, I know that 35 is half of 70, and so I can just easily say two different signs. So I've got 35, and I keep the sign of the larger absolute value. So negative 35 is my answer. I reordered it to make the numbers easier to add for me. Last one, associative property. Numbers can be grouped together without changing their sum. What does this look like? 5 plus 3 plus 4 is equal to, I do the parentheses first, 7, so 5 plus 7 is 12. But what if I regrouped them? 5 plus 3 plus 4, this would be 8 plus 4 is equal to 12. Changing the groups without changing the sum. They associate together differently. That's all there is to it. We'll do distributive property next time. We'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.